Sapna, one knows you, of course, as the celebrity hairstylist with all the tattoos. But you've, of course, made a documentary on a subject that's very close to my heart. Um, this is a film, of course, that's called Sindustan. And early on in the film, you say, all I knew about my culture was Sindhi Kari. It's something that really touched a chord with me because I, I really, f I, I'm Sindhi and I really feel like this generation, you know, um, people my age, uh, in their 40s, uh, children of kids of the partition, know so little about Sindhi culture, Sindhi history, um, apart from, of course, you know, the, the stories that have been sort of passed down through generations about what it was like to flee one's home um, overnight and, and lose everything that one had and come to a new land with, with very little. Uh, that's, that's practically all that this generation knows about, about their culture, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think that's so true because when we were little, I mean, we all had grandmothers yeah. used to tell these stories, but you know, you're not really interested in those stories as a child. Right. I mean, you listen to them and you're like, okay, okay, where are the lions and the tigers and tell me something else, like, you know? And as you're growing up, um, it was almost like you just forgot. Right. Because they didn't really talk about it too much because now you're too old to tell these stories to. Correct. And in school, you know, you used to sing the national anthem. So, are ha, sin de, hum hai. Bas, woi tha. Right. You know, hum sin de, gadi khate. Yeah, 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 exactly. But what that really meant mm. uh, didn't really sink in, I think. Everyone has that threshold and I think it might be in your late 30s or 40s yeah. where one day you wake up and say, hey, but hold on, where am I from? Right. You know, and it happens to everyone. And I think for me, um, when I, I actually was at a concert. That's right. Yeah, and I, I just saw these fakirs from Sindh perform and I was just so blown away because mm. I was like, yeah, I am from this land. Right. Who are these people? And, you know, like I went home and I Googled and then I found out that my favorite singer of all times, Abda Parveen, was Sindhi. Right. And this whole time, Ari, she's a Pakistani Sun Sufi singer. Correct. That's what I, I called her. But actually, she is a Sindhi Sufi singer. And she's such a feminist in her own right, mm. is why I really loved her because, you know, she's the only female who penetrated the male scene. Right. And she always said, I'm not a man or a female, I'm just a vessel of divinity. Right. So she was the one, actually, that really started, got me digging into my roots. Right. You said that um, another one of the catalysts for this film was meeting your 90-year-old grandmother. Uh, you had just started to get your tattoos and you were going to meet her and you covered them up. Uh, but she was uh, quite surprised that you were trying to cover it up. She was actually quite delighted that you had the tattoos because you discovered she had uh, a huge Krishna on her yes. forearm and she actually told you that uh, that this is part of our, our tradition, this is part of our, our culture. She, yeah, I mean, she she was not even just mainly talking about the Sindhi culture, mm. but she was talking about humans in general. Right. She said, you know, like when we came here and we, we all lived in, in, in tribes. Yeah. And in tribes, you all had markings. You know, we didn't have boundaries or we didn't have surnames. We didn't have governments or cities. We had markings that made, okay, it's from this tribe. And those markings were in the form of ink mm. and piercings. Right. And they're still present if you look at tribals you mm. know they still have their their markings and their piercings mm. and she said when i see you you're going back to your roots right and that's when i mean you know the whole time you're getting inked because you're like i'm gonna be this you know revolutionary person and i'm a rebel and then you find out you're so old-fashioned and you're just like it just killed everything for me you know and is that where then you sort of used, decided to use the idea of, of tattoos as the narrative device? Yes, of Because that's, that's a huge part of the film, of course. It's a huge part of the film and also I figured my legs because a lot of people think that legs are a very bad part of your body because mm. they don't think it's as pure as the top half of your body for right. some reason. Right. And feet are bad. But for me, it was like legs is the proper place because it's like our journey. And feet is like the lack of our roots. Mm. So I couldn't think of a better place to kind of dedicate um, to the history and to the story of where my ancestors came from. Right. And I figured with that, because I'm already so inked from top, yeah. I would also get almost 100% inked and go back to my roots, as my nanny said, you know. So hang on. The latter half of your body, or the legs, are covered with tattoos, which are actually stories that you heard from from adults, uh, stories about the culture, stories about their memories of yes, and even my my dad. I mean, like uh, where we come from, Shikarpur. 
So it all starts from there and it follows the river and kind of just the whole story is on my legs. Wow. So I've kind of just become a museum of India, you know, like this walking museum of stories. Right. You've said um, that the film is on one level an effort to put two dying art forms, Ajrak, which is uh, from Sindh, Sindh, from Kutch, uh, and Madhubani, which is from Bihar, uh, yeah. um, on, on, on the global scene. Talk about that. I feel like um, in the tattoo world now, mm -hmm. um, you know, there are art forms, even the Americans have an art form, the Japanese have an art form, there's a tribal art form, but India, for some reason, you know, like, hasn't really made it there, and when it comes to art, we really heavily immersed in it, mm. you know. So I figured even on the tattoo art form, I want like some white guys sitting in Brooklyn saying, hey man, I would love to get an Ajrak tattoo on me. Right. You know, or like someone sitting in Africa getting Madhubani on them. You know, so I just feel like... So these are different art forms. These yes, are, yeah. exactly. Like, so you will see like a lot of people actually even took photos. This one is Ajrak. This is the classic block print that you see. Right. Um, and this is, this is all inspired from Madhubani. So... People will, uh, they, they loved it so much, actually people have already taken photos of my legs and gotten that art form done on them. So right. that to me is the greatest homage you can pay to art, is sure. pass it forward, right? Sure. Yeah. You know, um, in the film, there is this one uh, lady, she's an older lady, and you ask her whether she'd go back if she yeah. had the choice. And she says, why would I go back? Uh, and she narrates this story, which is all too familiar to anyone who's grown up with grandparents the story of how um, neighbors or, or friends in Sindh, uh, who they frequently harvested crops with, whom they considered family, took over their homes when, when, when it came to partition. And she says, and it's a beautiful line, she says, uh, when love dies, everything, everything dies. dies. Yeah. Uh, it's really the kind of story one has heard over and over again from the grandparents, isn't it? Yes. But also a lot of it, because I thought there was a lot of bloodshed. And I thought that that was also with Sindhis. But when I started interviewing people, I realized that actually in the Sindhi community, there was not so much bloodshed. And maybe that's why it was so silent. Mm. Um, you hear a lot about the Punjabis, where there was a lot of bloodshed. Yeah. Yeah. And you always wondered, like, why not with the Sindhi community? Mm. They just left. They didn't fight. Right. And when I really realized that the, the you know, what a big influence Sufism actually had on us mm. and how it was a way of life. And that's one of the biggest reasons where we didn't want any bloodshed. Right. So, you know, there must have been a few bits that you saw, mm. but the, the loss actually for Sindhis was more of alienation right. than anything else. And I think the biggest thing for them was that nobody told them that you couldn't go back. Right. You right. Know? They just thought, okay, chal, jate. Correct. I'll see you. And a lot of them told their neighbors, take care of my thing, I'll be back. Right. But they didn't know they couldn't come back. Right. You know, there's a there's a bit in the film where you talk about how your father uh, took the kids on a boat or on a, on, on a ship uh, or, or it was relatives that, that left on, on boats as well. And, and there's a beautiful line, uh, when a parent puts a child uh, on, 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 a sh on a boat, it's only because the sea is safer than the land. land. And that says so much about those times. Yeah, and that quote is not from me. Um, so the, I, I forget the name of the poem, um, but it's a very popular, it's a very famous poem. And I broke it up into quotes and I actually say uh, many, uh, many lines from okay. that quote. But yeah, it's, it's, it's so true. It's like, there's, it's like you would not run from something you really love. Yeah that was the mouth of a shark right. that's also some something from Line, that that's thing right. and i just felt like that was so beautifully put like these guys it's not like they wanted to leave but they had to leave yeah and a lot of them now when they came here you know there's this quote i don't know if you've heard it a lot of people say that if you see a snake in a cindy yeah like kill the Sindhi. First, that's right. It's and one of those. It's one of those bad jokes that is that have stuck forever. Yeah. Yeah, and I always wondered, yeah, ye Why do right. you say that, yeah. right? So when I started interviewing these people, and I was like, why is it that they say this? And I realized when you have given up everything, mm. you come here. So Hindi was not your language. Yeah. Okay. Um, this was instead of writing from right to left, now you're writing from left to right. Correct. Everything has changed. Um, your uh, language, your culture, your clothing. You don't so have a state. You, you don't actually have a home state. Yeah, your home has changed. Right. You know, you don't even have anything to call your own. 
your job, everything. And you wonder if, if you have to start from scratch without anything, mm. obviously you're going to hold on to that one penny that you want also, yeah? Right. Ye paisa mera hai, nahi dunga. Right. And that made a lot of sense. Why Sindhis, you know, they, they call them that. Not yeah. that they are that because I've met a lot of Sindhis that are not like that. Right. But I can see where that, where that stereotype comes from. would have right. come from. And it makes sense right. perfectly well. If I had lost everything, maybe I would be the same. I yeah. don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but their stories have not been told. So people don't know no. that. Right. You know, you, you, you spoke about how in the film, you speak about how uh, you wanted to go to Sindh, of course, wanted to go to Pakistan and, and, and visit the, the home of your father, where your father was born, like countless of us do. Uh, I, I, know, I know it's a conversation I've had with my father. Uh, I know it's a conversation that so many of my friends have about wanting to just visit one's roots. And you couldn't, of course. And then you said, um, I decided to become the land because I couldn't go to the land. Yeah. And, and, and that's, of course, the, the tattoos. Uh, can you talk about that? And, and is, that, is that something that you found as a sort of recurring um, you know, complaint from, from those that had left and would perhaps go back, want to go back and, and, and you know, see the state of their home or see where they, you know, where, where, where they spent the early part of their lives and cannot, un unfortunately, anymore. You know, even my uncle that I interviewed, he's 94 years old and his only wish is before he dies, he wants to go back. Mm. And I said, I promise I'm going to take you back. And I thought with this documentary, I would probably be that person who would take him back. And right. he said, I don't know, first of all, I'm too old. I have to go to Delhi to get my visa because you can't get it in Bombay. And then I'll come with you to Delhi. Then I don't know if I'm going to get it. I don't know how I'm going to travel. And I said, okay, let me see if I can go there first, right. you know. So for me, not too many people, I, I realized like the, in their 20s, are really interested in going back. That's right. Um, also this constant hatred that has been thrown at us at this border where someone from the other side is bad, which right. is rubbish because people don't want that. Mm -hmm. I've learned this now. People want peace, you right. know. And so when I went there and I tried to apply and I didn't even tell them I'm shooting anything mm. because my intention was not even that. Right. It was like my father was born there. I just want to go, mm. you know, and I wrote a beautiful emotional letter because first time I was rejected. Then I wrote a letter and all I, s all I got was they've stopped all visas. Um, so you cannot go. And to me, now I think the fact that I still haven't gone, mm. uh, a lot of people thought that my my doc was incomplete because I haven't gone there yet. Right, but it's actually in the film. Yes, but I think that I learned that because at the whole time I was like so desperate seeking, I must go, I must go, I must go. And then slowly, slowly, when it just started easing mm, out, you, go, right. you know, and the thing is, I will go. There, it, there will yeah. be a time yeah. when that will happen. Mm. And the sad part is also this game where, oh, are you sure you want to go to Pakistan because then no other country will give you a visa to go there. Right. This is That's very sad. That's what one sad. constantly hears. Yeah, yeah. You know, so these things have to change. You'll never get a U.S. visa after you've traveled to Pakistan. Yeah. This is what one, one, one is constantly told. And I think as a refugee, because see this word, which has been yeah. used so much on yeah. a worldwide context. Yeah. I never realized that I am the daughter of a refugee. refugee right, right. Did you? No. I mean, no, you don't. You didn't yeah. even think of it in that context, Correct. right? So I feel like uh, children of refugees should have the right to go back and see where they came from. Sure. Right. This is a, you're, you're born with that right. True. You don't, you don't, you even have to ask for it. Right. It is our right. Right. You know? So this is something that I'm really fighting for more than anything else. You know, um, what I really liked about the film is that it's sort of bookended by your aunt cooking a traditional Sindhi meal, which is beautiful. And it, and, and it, and it, it is, of course, you know, the, the stereotype, the Sindhi kadi, but it's, it's, there's just so much love in that, the love with which she makes it and the love with which she talks about it. And the toque will only, be, you know, only if the <laughs> knife goes in fully is the toque ready. <laughs> and the little things that we've sort of heard all your lives in a Sindhi home. Yeah. Um, do, do, you, do you cook at all? Are you, uh, do, you, uh, do you at least appreciate Sindhi food? I love Sindhi food. Right. I mean, like I said, Sindhi curry who I mean you Correct. grew up it's with just, that and it's, it's, at some it's point, running in our veins yeah and not only Sindhis I think uh, true. everyone knows only that about our culture true you ask anyone Sindhi ke mein kya malum? Sindhi kari na <laughs> Matlab, so this is it so this is why like you know when we were I just wanted to go shoot her I mean my thing was just to include it but then Kabir who edited the film as yeah. well he said no 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 I I want to shoot the whole ritual it was a three-hour ritual right 
and somehow he did magic in the edit where the whole film yeah. started from the kitchen which right. is where everything starts from anyways mm. so it was never intention um, to do the whole film like that right. but that's where magic happens, right? You Correct. have to give it that, that room for it to happen. Her memories are coming out when she's cooking. She's yeah. talking about... She was talking about me yeah. and looking at me like that. And, I, and we didn't even have a mic on her because we didn't expect that. Right. So all that magic, we just got and we just used it. Right. You know, just used it. Um, what are some of the... Um, you know, what are some of the common uh, threads or the common things that, that most of these Sindhis that actually live through partition um, came back with? What are some of the... The, the feelings. I, I, there's definitely that sense of, of, of loss of their homes. Uh, but but what were some of the other things that, that you kept hearing? I think that a lot of them just kept on hearing how it's changed. Mm. A lot of them had a chance to go back and visit. Um, and it had changed so much that they didn't even think that they belonged there anymore. Right. This was a very common thing um, in a lot of them, actually, you know. And what I really learned, even when Dada, you know, Dada really said, because it's not about the land, it's about the people. Right. And people now are not even there. They're everywhere, you know. So in a way, even though the land is still there, right. but the people are not there. Yeah, yeah. So that and it's land, the people that make the place, of course, right? Exactly. Yeah. So what yeah. is the, because I've heard, like, even in Karachi now, Sindhi is not even spoken there. Right. You know. And, and those are things that, that's, that's so true, right? There's... There's a there's a fear there's a very genuine fear of losing this language, yeah. uh, the culture vanishing really. I mean, with, with that generation that uh, I feel like our parents' generation may perhaps be the last generation that that know how to even read and write. And exactly. I mean, can you speak? I, I can speak. Ha, muke thoda. Acheto. Acheto. See, I can understand all of it, but thoda gano. Like if someone speaks to me constantly, Correct. I'll pick it up. Right. But I can understand it a hundred percent. Yeah, me too. Yeah, but I can't speak it. Sure. So therefore, tomorrow if I have and a it's child, not I'm proud of. But yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But tomorrow now, when we have kids, what is going to pass on to that child? And after that, it's over. Right. And it's even more heartbreaking when you you know when these controversies happen, like the like the national anthem controversy. Yeah. It's bad enough you don't have a state. It's bad enough there is literally no sign of of this culture. Now you're saying remove the last uh, mention of this of, of this place from from any existence from the national anthem. Yes, and that to me is is actually just uh, uh, ignorance. Yeah, a lot of people don't understand. Do you know? I was actually even told by someone like, oh, why don't you just go back to Pakistan because that's they where you're from. They say that all the time. Yeah, and I'm like, do you know the Sindh was there way before Pakistan came? Correct. You like right. This memory has been erased, erased. Right, right? right? A lot of people just think that Pakistan has been there forever. Right. And everything there always belonged to Pakistan, mm. not knowing that that was a part of India. Mm. So this, this is something that has to change. Right. Uh, I feel like people need to be a little more sensitive uh, to people who have actually lost a lot. And even my hope of going back there does not make me an anti-national. Right. I mean, is it wrong to go and see where your where ancestors, your came, ancestors from? came from? Of course. You know, and you are of course taking the film around. The film premiered at the New York Indian Film Festival. Yes. Uh, it screened at Atlanta. Yes. Uh, you're traveling with the film. What have been some of the reactions? Oh my from God! From a non-Sindhi audience, uh, they are just first of all to comprehend that you're telling the story in such a way. Yeah. You know, uh, for Indians, like a lot of them, they didn't even know what Jule Lal. I mean, oh, Maskalanda Gana, yeah. you know, but they didn't know he's actually a saint. Correct. So all these things uh, people just like kind of heard of but didn't really know. So a lot of people have actually told me that they've gone and actually Googled Sindh. Right. And that's, that is my only thing. Right. You find your own Sindh. Sure. I'm not here to, you know, tell you this is Sindh. This is my Sindh. Right. Ab tum dhundo. Correct. You know, so that has been the case. So. I'm quite what excited. What about Sindhis? I would imagine they're, they're very curious. Oh my God. That was like, they bought the theater, I think, in New York. Uh, it was amazing in, in Atlanta as well. Now we're going to uh, Canada. Mm -hmm. After that, we're going to Germany, then back to Canada, then because to Australia. Because Sindhis are everywhere, of course. Yeah. And one Sindhita was like, I want to buy the film now, and I want to release it. I said, yeah, calm down. I want to let me do this festival thing for a little bit. Then right. you buy it, you release it. Right. 
So more, just as many people can uh, as, as many people as you can reach out to. Yeah, otherwise I'll just put it out for yeah. free. Like for me, uh, I never really made this to make money off sure. of. You know, sure. my goal was just so the younger gen. I'm talking to the younger generation, Correct. not to you know. Yeah. And for you to see, uh, for you to learn a little bit. Right. Ink is just a language that will lure you in. Yeah. Because you'll be like, Are wah. Ab main dekhungi. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So come, watch. Correct. That was the whole that was the whole goal. And also the goal was when I was in, in New York at uh, the the Sydney Congress of North America, they threw a little reception for us, you know? Mm. And they are all the Muslim Sindhis. Right. And I it was so wonderful so wonderful to see that mm. they just embraced me and they were just like i hope you get to go you know to sin right so this organization is called sana and there's another one the world congress they've invited me to come speak in september oh lovely so this is all from the other side right you know and they've all like please they like come right so this is the goal you know yeah, i don't know so there is hope yeah the goal is one day I get to go there, show the film there. Sure. If not, maybe I'll go to the border and project from this side. Right. I will say that I will stand with the chadar and we will do a film across borders. Congratulations on this passion project. Thank you. Uh, lovely film. I really hope it gets to travel and I do hope that all the Sindhis uh, and certainly non-Sindhis as well discover it um, and understand a little bit about a, a culture that's, that otherwise is going to be fast forgotten. Yeah, and next time you say kill the sna the Sindhi, think about think it, about man. It, yeah, yeah. It hurts. It does. <laughs> it does. It does. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.